doing a quick tutorial on getting an on-screen keyboard to work with your Macintosh and Promethean Active Inspire software. This is not a problem that affects PCs typically, although I can do another tutorial on getting on-screen keyboards to work with that operating system, with the Windows operating system or others. This is specifically for Macintoshes because this is a known error. If you're in your uh, menu bar and you go to the on-screen keyboard icon here and you click on it, what typically happens is you get nothing. You may also, if you don't see that, go find it in the Tools, More Tools option, and then there's on-screen keyboard there, or use Command-K. And again, nothing shows up. And if I want to change text here, believe me, that's the reason we're not getting the on-screen keyboard is not because we're not in the text editor. It just simply doesn't show up. Again, this is a known issue inside of Active Inspire for Macs. It's been going on for quite some time. Even with updated software, you may run into this, and that's why I'm generating this tutorial. There are two solutions. One is to use the built-in on-screen keyboard that's part of the operating system, not part of Active Inspire. The other is to start or use an app or another program that gives you an on-screen keyboard. I won't be covering that in this tutorial, but I will be covering the System Preferences keyboard option. So let's go right now up to the Apple icon and System Preferences. You'll see in the middle of your screen comes up a keyboard icon here. And by clicking on that, you're going to have the option to show keyboard and character viewers in the menu bar. And as soon as you turn that on, you get this little handy icon here. It shows you the options for showing a keyboard viewer. And just for a quick moment, I want to take a second to talk about second language learners using special characters or people teaching second languages. You may want to move over to the input sources option here on a Mac, and you can turn on different languages that you're going to use in addition to US English. And by having show input menu in the menu bar turned on, you'll see that now that icon changes to my primary language there or the one that I'm currently using. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back, make sure that that is on, show keyboard is on. At the minimum, this is the main one that you need though for this tutorial, so that that's on there. Go and close that down. And now when I go back to Active Inspire, when I'm in something here, if I just want students to be able to use text entry or use the arrow keys to navigate something, say you're not even in Active Inspire, but you want to be able to move around a Civil War battlefield virtual tour or do some other things on screen without using the keyboard, even just to enter in uh, websites up at the top in the address bar on a web uh, uh, browser, here's what you want to have. Because this does not work again, you're going to go up to this icon here, it should either be the flag of the language you're currently using or that little asterisk icon and paper there. You want to show keyboard viewer. There you go. So in a second that's going to bring up an on-screen keyboard and it's going to be kind of small or in your case it might be very very large. What you don't get with this particular keyboard is the traditional diagonal double arrow resizing icon change or cursor change that typically comes. However, you can grab, even without that, in any corner and make uh, the size of this keyboard bigger or smaller, all right, without that. So I typically make it pretty large and then try to move it out of the way, or you can make it a reasonable size because obviously it's going to show up much larger uh, to students when they're seeing things uh, blown up big on the, the screen, um, on your projection screen there. So I typically make that really, really large there um, for me, but right here I can edit this, I can change help to hello, and then I can, maybe I need to make that a little smaller. You know, I can arrow over and delete, and there we've done some editing. And students can do that right at the board without ever having to go reach your keyboard wherever it might be. A uh, great example of how to use this also out on websites is back here. I've got a, a fun one, uh, Arcademic. Um, has some fun sites. I typically grab this one and make it nice and big so that the keys that I know I'm going to use for this game are really easy targets for a student and they're off to the side out of the way. Kind of move them off over here. And then what we do is play this game right here.
And you'll see here I've got the number two, and what I want to do is eliminate anything that uses that addition. So I come over and I shoot, and then I need to get a four, so I come over and shoot there. Uh, let's see, there's a three there. Let's see, there's a five. There's a five. And there we go. So just one way that you can have on-screen tools for your students to use and another way for you to use your Active Inspire uh, in Promethean software using on-screen keyboard tooling. There. So um, best of luck with your lessons. God bless, and I hope this helps you.